So anyone who watches this show, I mean, you already know that MSNBC is trash. They're nothing more than the propaganda arm of the DNC and the Democratic Party establishment. But I mean, these last couple of weeks have really been something else. It's been truly just unbelievable. They've been somehow worse than usual. And this whole year, throughout the entire 2020 Democratic Party primary, they've been insufferable. But just within the span of these last two weeks, you had not one, but two MSNBC hosts, Chuck Todd and Chris Matthews, compare either Bernie Sanders or his supporters to Nazis. You had Dr. Jason Johnson, an MSNBC contributor, defend Mike Bloomberg, an oligarch. And on top of that, he went on a different show and referred to top Bernie Sanders surrogates as misfit black girls. You had an MSNBC reporter covering the Nevada caucus, sighing loudly as she tells you that Bernie Sanders was dominating. I mean, their credibility is tanking currently. And there has been so much criticism of MSNBC over these last two weeks because of their horrible coverage that there's been mass calls for some anchors to be fired or resign. And this has literally forced them to respond to this criticism. That's how bad it's gotten, which has led to this headline. MSNBC president Phil Griffin is doing his best to give Bernie his due. After a Sanders surge and a Matthews gaffe, MSNBC prepares to pivot with Bernie rally coverage, Bernie-friendly guests, and a mandate to seek out more smart pro-Sanders voices. The cable net confronts a new reality. He's winning, says a source. Now, let me just explain what's happening here. They're not having a genuine change of heart. They're not hearing out our criticism and trying to respond accordingly. This is a business decision. This is a business decision because this is a fight for their survival. If they want to remain relevant for years to come, they have no choice but to pivot, right? Because most of their viewers are Democratic leaning. So if Bernie Sanders becomes the standard bearer for the Democratic Party and they continue to attack him, what happens? Their viewers go away. Like, if I just all of a sudden turned and I started attacking Medicare for All, what would happen? People who watch would be outraged. They would stop listening and my show would basically go downhill. I wouldn't be able to keep this channel going. So the same is true for MSNBC. If Bernie Sanders is the leader of the Democratic Party, then what are they going to do? Just continue to attack him and turn into Fox News? Of course not. They'd lose all their viewers. And sure, maybe they'd attract some conservative viewers, but not enough to keep the boat afloat, right? So they have no choice. This is a business decision. This isn't them, you know, trying to do better, right? This is them saying, oh my God, the writing's on the wall. We're dying. We're going to do better. We promise. Please don't stop watching us forever. So let's look at this article. This is from Joe Pompeo of Vanity Fair, who explains... Griffin is taking the complaints seriously, according to network sources. After Matthew's comments on Saturday night, Griffin's phone blew up with an angry reaction from the campaign. Griffin quickly discussed the matter with Matthews, who then interviewed campaign co-chair Nina Turner on air minutes later. Sources also noted that MSNBC took Sanders' El Paso and San Antonio rallies live on Saturday, and that Sanders' people, like campaign manager Faz Shakir and former campaign manager Jeff Weaver, both received airtime on Monday. The Sanders team is in in contact with our senior management, one source said, and they are heard. Phil is doing his best to give Bernie his due. Now, with Sanders looking more and more like the presumptive nominee, MSNBC's coverage will have to shift to reflect that. Will they bring in more contributors that are pro-Sanders? That's where the chatter is, another insider told me. As a matter of news, you have to. Management is sensitive to it, that he is now very possibly going to be the nominee. He's winning. I ran that notion past the network executive. Yes, the race has changed over the last couple of weeks, and we are going to reflect that and make adjustments, he said. One easy easy way to do that is to seek out more smart pro Sanders voices from people who can make our coverage more insightful, but the executive added their campaign like any other is do fair coverage, not fawning coverage. So make no mistake about it, they're doing this because they have no choice. They're being dragged, kicking and screaming, and did everything that they possibly could to stop this from happening. But now that it's happening, now that Bernie Sanders is looking like he's going to be the nominee. Either they adapt or they go extinct. That's really what this is about. And I honestly resent the fact that they are insinuating we want fun and coverage. We've never asked for fun and coverage. We have asked for fair coverage. So don't try to pretend as if that's what we're asking you to do. We don't want you to become the Bernie Sanders propaganda network. We just want fairness.
That's all we want. Fairness and objectivity. Inform people. Don't make them dumber when they tune into MSNBC. That's it. And, you know, to suggest that they don't give fun and candidates to other uh, fun and coverage to other candidates. I mean, you have been doing everything you can to prop up Elizabeth Warren and Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden. So, I mean, spare me the bullshit we see right through you. And if you truly want to do better, which they don't, this is a business decision. But I mean, if we're truly trying to improve and if you want less criticism for your coverage, here's the first immediate course of action that you need to take. Stop comparing Bernie Sanders and his supporters to Nazis. Bernie Sanders had members of his family die during the Holocaust. And you have anchors saying his supporters are like digital brown shirts or that his victory is like when, na when Nazis conquered France. That's not acceptable. That is not acceptable. So start there. Start by not doing that. Second of all, stop lying about Bernie Sanders. You don't get to say that he doesn't have support from people of color. You don't get to lie and say that he is less electable than Donald Trump when you haven't cited a single poll and polls show the opposite is true. Stop lying about the progressive policy proposals that we're fighting for. Medicare for all, you don't get to say, oh, Americans don't support it when public opinion polls show the opposite. Stop lying. Just stop there. Stop lying. And that's the bare minimum. That's what you could do immediately. If you stop lying, then we're already looking at a really huge, drastic improvement. But you can't keep lying. Now, I want to go to a clip from Anand uh, Giridharadaras because he really did a good job at explaining why MSNBC's pundits shouldn't be hysterical right now. What they're seeing take place should make them feel more curious, make them inquisitive, make them want to try to understand what's happening because, I mean, clearly, they don't get what's happening right now. They don't understand why the Democratic Party is opting for someone that they clearly hate, right? So he basically went on MSNBC, and I'm surprised he wasn't cut off, but he explained that they should be trying to do better, not because they're forced to, but because their job is to educate people. Their job is to inform voters and do political analysis. But the fact that they're just being hysterical, it's a bad look. Last night was a historic win that I think a lot of us are still struggling to understand it. It's not historic only because Bernie Sanders is now decisively proving that he can win in milk white America and in the emerging superpower of color that we are becoming. Something is happening in America right now that actually does not fit our mental models. It certainly doesn't fit the mental models of a lot of people on TV. It doesn't fit the mental models of a lot of people in the parties. It doesn't fit our cultural mental models. You have someone talking about, in a way we have not heard, genuine, deeper democracy, popular movements, um, human equality in a meaningful way, and, and a politics of love in the tradition of Dr. King, and winning elections in America, the United States of America. And I just have to say, and I, I've been, I've been um, encouraged watching you on air talk about your own rethinking of things, which I think we all have to do to be in this work. I think this is a wake up moment for the American power establishment. From Michael Bloomberg, to those of us in the media, to the Democratic Party, to donors, to CEOs, many in this establishment are behaving, in my view, as, as they face the prospect of a Bernie Sanders nomination, like, out of touch aristocrats in a dying aristocracy. Just sort of, how do we stop this? How do we block this? And there is no curiosity. Why is this happening? What is going on in the yeah. lives of my fellow citizens in this country? They may be voting for something that I find it so hard to understand. What is happening? What is happening? This is a moment for curiosity in America. I think yeah. about this network, which I love, which you love. And I think we have to look within also, why is a lobbyist for Uber and Mark Zuckerberg on the air many nights explaining a political revolution to us. Why is Chris Matthews on this air talking about the victory of Bernie Sanders who had Kin yeah. murdered in the Holocaust and analogizing it to the Nazi conquest of France? The people who are stuck in an old way of thinking in 20th century frameworks in gulag thinking are missing what is going on. It is time for all of us to step up, rethink, and understand the dawn of what may be, frankly, a new era in American life. And he is exactly right. Like, all of these people on MSNBC, these are mainstream news pundits who make millions of dollars every single year, and they can't possibly understand 
why a Sanders presidency is so important. Like, this is life or death to a lot of people. We're counting on Bernie getting elected so we can get health care, so we can actually have a life and not be bogged down by student loan debt forever. This is life or death for a lot of people. So the fact that they don't understand it shows that they have failed at their jobs as journalists. Look, I actually do believe in fairness and objectivity, and I will play Chris Matthews' apology because when he returned to the air on Monday after that meltdown that he had on Saturday, he actually did have a really, I don't want to say genuine apology, but I'd, I'd say a pretty solid apology to Bernie Sanders and his supporters. Take a look. Before getting into tonight's news, I want to say something quite important and personal. As I watched the one-sided results of Saturday's Democratic caucus in Nevada, I reached for an historical analogy and used a bad one. I was wrong to refer to an event from the last days, or actually the first days of World War II. Senator Sanders, I'm sorry for comparing anything from that tragic era in which so many suffered, especially the Jewish people, to an electoral result in which you were the well-deserved winner. This is going to be a hard-fought, heated campaign of ideas. In the days and weeks and months ahead, I will strive to do a better job myself of elevating the political discussion. Congratulations, by the way, to you, Senator Sanders, and to your supporters on a tremendous win down in Nevada. Apology accepted. And I say that because, look, we are a movement that is driven by empathy. We are fueled by a deep desire for racial, social, and economic justice. So we don't want to bring anyone down. That's not the goal. And whenever, you know, we hear this talk of Bernie bros harassing people online, you've got to understand, we are fighting for our lives right now. Whenever you lie about Medicare for all, like, I'm sorry, but the pearl clutching, when you get corrected online, it just makes you look bad. So if you're willing to own up to your mistakes, apologize, and more importantly, do better, we will give you credit where it's due. Like in December or early January, I actually did a segment where I uh, said that Chris Matthews was doing a good job because he looked at the results, the polls in Iowa, and he said, look, Bernie Sanders has the best shot currently. It was an objective analysis. That's all we're asking for. Objectivity. That's it. Just be fair to us. You don't have to be the pro-Bernie propaganda network. Just be fair and objective and do good journalism. That's all that we're asking for. But the fact that it's come to this, the fact that they're now scrambling to try to save themselves after they've made a fool of themselves. I mean, you, you, Phil Griffin, you should have reined them in last year when all throughout the year they were predicting that Bernie Sanders couldn't last past August or that, you know, any time now his campaign is going to collapse. Like, you should have realized that maybe the anti-Bernie bias was becoming a little bit too obvious. And you guys were showing your cards and making it so that way the Sanders supporters couldn't trust you. Or even, even you know, Democratic Party loyalists who don't necessarily support Bernie but would, in a general, can't trust you. Because you clearly have an anti-Bernie agenda, which means you have an anti, you know, a working class agenda. So look, just do better. It may be too late for MSNBC. Honestly, I don't know that their reputation can ever recover unless they replace everyone on air currently. But I mean, if you don't actually change course and just be fair at a minimum, stop lying, then um, I don't know what to say. It, it might be too late already for them, but if they're going to try, then I mean, that would be much appreciated because this really is not acceptable. Like, their behavior is totally, totally unacceptable. And if I'm working for MSNBC, I'm ashamed right now. I'm embarrassed to be part of that network. So they've got to do better, and they're saying they're going to pivot. We'll see, but um, come Super Tuesday, if Bernie Sanders emerges as, you know, the undeniable frontrunner and the presumptive nominee, we'll see how you act then. If we see more hysteria, then we know that you're not serious.